I'm Kristen Oaks White and welcome to Feasting on Agriculture. Now that Easter has come and gone and the Lenten season is over, Louisiana beef is what's for dinner. Feasting on Agriculture with Kristen Oaks White is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board, Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat, and by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner, and by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, think rice. <laughs> episode we're bringing you the beef in the big way and we're going to cook the holy grail of barbecue and that's a smoked brisket and to cook this perfect smoked brisket we're enlisting the help of Mr. Jay Decody, Louisiana's own celebrity chef and so when we talk about smoking a brisket this is not something that's for the faint of heart when it comes to barbecuing because it takes a really long time yeah. and it's really challenging to get it right. Why is that? Yeah, you know, to me, this is um, this is really the toughest thing to do in the barbecue world uh, to get right. The the brisket is um, really, uh, it, it is the holy grail. It is the, the toughest piece of, piece of meat to get right in competition barbecue or for any barbecue restaurant out there. Um, it's it's what you can really kind of judge somebody's barbecue on. And, uh, and I love it. And, and I also think it's one of the hardest pieces of meat to perfect. And it's so difficult because it, it can be really tough, right? Yeah, sure. You know, you're taking uh, one of historically the, the cheapest and, and, and most difficult pieces of meat on the cow to cook. Um, it is uh, essentially uh, two muscles coming together in the pectoral region of the front leg of the cow. Uh, it's a muscle group that does a lot of work. It's part of the muscle group that actually holds up the weight of the cow for its entire life. Uh, and so it, it's, it's some of those working muscles that are really tough on the cow. Uh, and you have to cook it low and slow. You have, to, you have to braise it or boil it or smoke it for a long time. You can't cook it like a steak uh, where, where you can just grill it hot and fast and, and still have it be super tender. See, I, I knew that you would know this because I grew up showing cattle, Angus cattle mm -hmm. specifically, which is what this kind of yep. meat is. And did you know that since cattle don't have a collarbone, that this muscle supports 60% of their weight. Wow. Sounds like you already knew that, but wow. I found that little piece of trivia and I, would, I thought it was interesting. Would not have known 60%, <laughs> but obviously, yeah. It's, it's a, a lot. It's a lot. And it, it explains yeah. why it's so tough. Yeah, absolutely. I love dealing with the, the whole brisket, the whole packer brisket, uh, which is where you do have the two muscles coming together. Right. Um, so you can kind of see uh, that, that this, is, this area here and, and where, where you have the, the taller piece of the brisket and just like the obviously larger chunk and where it comes more to a point is the point side of the brisket. Right. And then where it's flatter and where it kind of lays out flatter is mm -hmm. the flat side of the brisket. So the flat here, and you can kind of see on the end that that's one muscle. Right. And that muscle kind of tucks in underneath the other muscle that runs over the top here. And there's a seam between those two muscles that runs here that's a, that's a big chunk of fat there as well. And you can kind of see here yeah, yeah. that that's that fat layer right there that's running between these two muscles. It's a lot more concentration of fat, a lot more marbled beef right. that's coming from the, the point. But obviously there's a lot of fat all over this thing. Uh, and we've got to trim a lot of that to, to get it ready for the smoker. So if somebody wants to do this at home, how much, yeah. where do you start when it comes to trimming? Yeah, so, so it depends on the size of the brisket that you get and, and how much trim came off of it at the slaughterhouse. And like you can see, I'm just sticking my fingers in right. here between, like this is just fat right here. Um, and I'm trying to not get any extra muscle taken off, but we'll do some, like that's, that's just going in the trash can. Right. Um, there's nothing we're gonna do with that. And this whole chunk right here is, is, is also, this is all just fat. So pretty much anything that you can grab, like a handful of, yeah. of solid fat. And, and, and a lot of that's also just not really going to do great in the smoker. I mean, we're cooking this thing for 12 to 14 hours in the smoker. Um, and during that time, a lot of just the, the little bits that you have sticking off mm -hmm. are, are just going to cook off, burn off during that time anyway. 
so you don't really need to keep it around. So that's part of the trimming that we're doing as well, is really kind of creating some degree of aerodynamics in there okay. for that smoke to flow around. So th this side looks really pretty good to me. We're gonna uh, apply enough uh, mustard and then my salt and pepper rub to coat this and th that's what we're looking for there. So Louisiana is home to 440,000 head of cattle and in 2019 the Louisiana beef industry generated $390 million. So now we're in the smoking stage, correct? That is correct. <laughs> Again, I'll repeat, this is not for the faint at heart, especially when you're doing 24. Yep, that's a lot of briskies. At, uh, right at daylight is when I'll be here by myself and I get to pull them all off and wrap them in butcher paper and put them all back on. All by yourself? Yep. And then we'll slide down to the next bay. across Baton Rouge and the state of Louisiana and actually across the country for being a pretty awesome chef. He made his name by strapping a smoker to the back of his truck for tailgating season during LSU football games. And as you can see, it's only upgraded from here. I found this uh, platform called Blogging and it was, uh, it was in 2009 I started a food blog and then through that started um, Facebook pages and Twitter handles for that food blog and then turn that into, into radio programs and broadcast uh, and, 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 and podcasts, radio programs and podcasts. Uh, and then that led to TV opportunities and, and every time different social media channels would come through, I would, I would use that and I was just an early adopter for those things and was able to build a brand through food media that led to actually being able to build a career in food. Um, and, and through the product line and through me cooking. Um, but that was never really the intent. I mean, I never <laughs> went to culinary school. I would never, never was a professional chef by trade. Right. Um, I, I just started to really love working in the food world. Day two. The magic of television, we don't have to wait. Yeah, yeah, it was. Because uh, you did all the work last night. It was a great night though. <laughs> uh, kept the fire going. And so these guys have been on the pit for a little over 14 hours now. Uh, we're looking for it to get up to about 205 degrees uh, internal temperature, over 200, uh, and then and then could let it rest a little bit. Yeah. So this is that point. Yeah. Uh, this is the flat side here. So this is where we'd really get that sliced brisket from. A lot of your chopped brisket, uh, you can get some slices from there. To get started, I like to just Ooh. cut off a little bit of that point end. And so you were talking about the smoke ring. It's pretty perfect. Yep, we can look at the smoke ring right around. You really develop that, that red color around the edges and that really kind of black bark color that's on the outside. Obviously this was, this was a, close to a 20 pound brisket when it went on the pit. It's gonna yield, gosh, probably, we, we still probably have uh, 13 pounds, 12, 13 pounds of, of meat right here. Can feed a lot of people with this one brisket. So if you're just doing one in the backyard, get a whole family together, have fun. Well, I'm assuming that you had one extra for me that I can take home. Mm. Because if you don't, I'm just gonna stay here and eat it. The good news is when I cook briskets, I cook 24 at a time. So I think we can make that happen. Well, it is absolutely perfect jay i know it was a long night but it was certainly worth it and i know that everybody that's going to pick it up today is going to be really happy if you want to learn more about louisiana beef or any of jay's products or jay's services his restaurant you can visit our website at twilighttv.org i'm going to leave you off signing off today because i'm going to sit here and try as much as he's going to let me so thank you so much jay it's been wonderful thanks for joining us on feasting on agriculture Feasting on Agriculture with Kristen Oaks White was brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board, Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. And by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner. And by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, 
Think Rights. As Kristen mentioned, if you want to learn more about Jay Cody and his backyard brisket recipe, or to purchase some of his special spice blends, visit our website at twilighttv.org.